turned from um, the presentation position, we had to make a turn to our right and face the flags for the playing of the anthem. Now that put me on the turn in front with Tommy behind me and John behind him. The anthem started and when the US anthem was played there was a guy up in the stand that always used to sing it and um, unamplified, he just was one of the crowd and sang the, the US anthem and sang it very well too. But on this occasion he got about six bars into the, into the words and just faded out. And then there was the crescendo of, of reaction from the crowd and it was then that I knew that Tommy and John had had carried out what they said they were going to. And uh, for the rest of the playing of the anthem, there was a, I suppose like the, the old hair standing up on the back of the neck, in my case, to, to think that these guys had, uh, had really gone through with exactly what they said they were going to. And that they'd made their demonstration and that at that point in time, they'd certainly made their point. They made a stand that uh, at the time was misconstrued by a lot of people. There were boos, there were cheers, there were whistles, there were catcalls, there was, there was every type of emotion that you could imagine that went around that stand. Um, while Tommy and John proudly demonstrated for what they believed in more than anything else in the world at that time. They, they could have, they could have not raised the fist. They could have not worn the black socks. They could have stood out there and accepted their medals um, to their own personal glory. But those two giants of men on that day um, told the world exactly where they stood and in a, in a way to...